Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're going to talk about tungsten. Kind of a strange subject, boring subject, but I get a lot of questions, a lot of calls, a lot of emails on tungsten in the diameter to use, what's the right tungsten for your application. Now, we put together a nice little package, and this was primarily for the air-cooled torches. So if you have an air-cooled torch, this is what we call the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, this will handle everything you could possibly need. Now, what defines whether you use an air-cooled or not? I like to use 200 amps as the maximum that you use an air-cooled torch. Anything above that, you want to go water-cooled. But let's talk about air cool for the time being, because I've got a 200 amp machine here. This is an AC-DC machine, so I'm going to be able to do steels and aluminum. Let's get back to the tungsten. This package is set up with an 040 diameter, a 1 16th diameter, and a 332 diameter. So when and where would you use those tungsten? Yeah, so that's what we're going to demonstrate right here. Now the 040, it'll only handle up to about 70 amps, and it's designed for very, very fine welding. So if you're doing jewelry type welding, if you're doing uh, gun repair, if you're doing very fine edges, and I take this, this tube, it's like a 22 gauge material, and if you want to weld on the edge and restore something, uh, in, in most cases your machine will uh, create a little divot when you strike, strike the arc. So to get the best performance out of your machine, First of all, your machine has to be able to go down to low amps. So this machine will go down to 5 amps. I need to put a tungsten that will allow it to go down to 5 amps. So I'm going to put the 040 tungsten in there, and I'm just going to do a little weld on top so you can see. Very few amps required. It's probably going to be between 5 and 8 amps that I'm going to be welding, just to get a little liquid on the edge. And hopefully I don't have a little wowie in there. And then I'm going to set this up very much like a, a gun or a rifle repair. And I'm just going to put a little droplet on there. And I don't want any dis distortion. I'm just going to add a little bit of filler, put a little droplet on there. And <clears throat> now I've gone from 040. I'm going to jump forward and I'm going to go to 332 tungsten. 332 tungsten, which is in this kit, it'll allow you to go up to right around 200 amps. Uh, it'll start uh, degradating right around 180, 185, depending on which tungsten you've got. But what that allows you to do, it, it allows you to take um, aluminum like these plates right here. This, these are aluminum plates, and what we're going to do is we're going we're to put them together. We're going to do a lap weld, and a lap weld and fillet weld are probably the most challenging on a machine and the tungsten. So we're going to do a lap weld and turn the machine up. So you're going to get the gamut from low all the way to high. Again, this kit has the right tungsten, the right call, it's called it bodies, gas lenses, and it's called the stubby gas lens kit. Now, two things are going to happen. One is I'm going to put the 040 tungsten in, and when I do that, I'm going to use the argon gas, but I'm going to turn the gas down. And the reason for that is when you're lighting off at low amps, or a little trick is, instead of running 15 CFH, turn your argon gas down to about 8. It has less turbulence, and you get a very soft arc initiation. So I'm going to go ahead and put my gear on, and we'll get started. Okay, what I did on, this, uh, on the edge of this, this is stainless steel. I've got the 040 tungsten ground to a point. It's on DC. This machine lights off at 5 amps, and the only way I can get it to, to light off truly at 5 amps is to put this tungsten in there. Anyway, I made the weld. I, I welded between probably 5 and 7 amps. Didn't add any filler because I just wanted to show you how fine you could get your welding. Now, I also did this little trick. In this kit, you get a number 5 cup, 6, and 7. And you actually narrow this down so you have better control of your gas flow. So I narrowed it down, put the 5 on, turned the gas down to about 8 CFH, uh, initiated the arc, and oh, by the way, because it's so difficult to see the lumens that you put out from the arc, I, I had to change my helmet to between an 8 and an 8.5. Uh, also, I went to a 2.5 cheater lens. Normally, I use a 1.75 to a 2.0. So let me put the, the middle size in now. We're going to go to a 1 16th tungsten pointed, and we're going to do a little repair. Okay, now this type of a repair is going to be something you'd have in a gun repair, or something like a gun barrel, or maybe the sight was worn down or got filed down, you want to build it back up. So we want to get on it, get a little puddle, get a little buildup, and get off. 
One of the things I put in here was a 1 16th tungsten because I'm going, to, I'm going to be using probably 30 or 40 amps on this. So it's not quite as sensitive, but I've got a point on the tungsten that's DC. And I put the number six cup in. So you can see the little progressions by having this kit. Number six, I'm going to turn the gas up just slightly. I'm going to be somewhere around 10 CFH, maybe 11 CFH. And all I'm going to do is you're going to see a little puddle. I'm going to put a little droplet on there and then the repair is done. Okay, now that I've made that repair, you can see there was a little bit of rust in there, and that's the real world. You just see it floating around. But when you add the filler material, it cleans up an awful lot. So just know that 1 16th is probably what I use most of the time for gun repair. Anyway, just to repeat, it's a pointed tungsten, about 10 to 11 CFH straight argon. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change over. I'm going to put 332 tungsten in here, and that tungsten will handle just about everything that this machine will put out. So I'm going to do a lap weld in aluminum. Aluminum is most challenging on a tungsten, so give me a few seconds and I'll change this out and do that as well. Okay, now what I've done is I've set my machine up for uh, up to 200 amps uh, AC and I've got just a, a little bit of cleaning action going on it. But I've got a, a 1 8 inch plate and I've overlapped them so I've created a, a lap weld or a fillet if you will. And so that does challenge your tungsten a little bit more so it's a good way to see how well your machine is performing and how your setup is. So what I've done is I've placed the number 7 cup or it's a it's an alumina cup. I've got a 332 tungsten. Now you can go ahead and grind it to a point. It's okay because as soon as you start welding it's going to ball up slightly anyway and it's going to make a little ball. But uh, what I've done is I've, I've reset my helmet at, at a, a number shade 10. Uh, you know, so it may be between 10 and 11, depending on the sensitivity of your eyes. But uh, I like a 10 for this amount of amps. Anyway, uh, so the 332 tungsten, make sure that you turn your gas up just a little bit because now we've got an open orifice. We want somewhere between 15 and 20 CFH. And you can determine that by the breeze that's in your shop. You know, if you've got a lot of uh, activity going on, run it at 20 CFH. If not, keep it down at 15. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. I'm going to add filler, 4043. And again, the machine is on AC. Okay, so let's recap what this kit is all about. We've got three different size tungstens. We now have three different styles and types of welding. This one right here is a somewhat of a micro welding. Again, this is uh, something you do in the 20 amps. Uh, this particular weld that I made was welding on the edge of a 20 thousandths wall tube and it just barely melted the material. So we ran this at about five or six amps. Uh, so we need the 040 tungsten. Now I, I jumped up a size in tungsten uh, added a few more amps, and I probably use somewhere between 30 and 40 amps to put this little ball on the end. Okay, this kind of represents a, uh, a gun repair, a sight repair. Dabbed a little filler and got on, got off. That's the key to it. So now we go to the 332 tungsten setup with the gas lens, and in each one of them I used a different cup, uh, different gas settings. So I went from a, uh, a gas setting of 8 to 10 CFH or uh, even, even less, then I jumped up to uh, the 1 16th tungsten. You can run 10 CFH, 11, 12. There's quite a little range you can play with, but just know there's little nuances that make this better. And then when I jumped up to uh, aluminum welding, I'm, I'm at 15 to 20 CFH, which is the normal setting. So I just want to tell you that, uh, that we put this together for you. This is the 80-20 rule. And we have other kits that we've come out with. Now we've got one kit that's into the really super micro welding where we're down. We're going to be using stereo microscopes and showing you how to do tooling and things like that. It'll be a different kit, but it'll be downsized one size. You'll see an O2O diameter tungsten. Wow, you're going to be welding at 2 amps. Uh, and again, at 2 amps, you need a microscope to be able to see the weld. And we're also going to jump it up for the heavy-duty welding. If you're using the high end of this machine all the time, we're going to jump it up in the high end. We'll show you a 1 8 inch diameter tungsten. Now, that 1 8 inch is more than adequate for this. In fact, the 1 8 inch jumps up into the water cool version. So it'll handle up in the 225, 250 amp range. And that's, that's pretty much where you'll max out at. Uh, otherwise, you're going to start doing multiple passes.
So I want to introduce something to you. You've seen the sticker on the side of the machine. What I'm doing is I'm doing what's called a Mr. TIG approved. Uh, and when I do that, it means that I've taken a, a certain product or a machine and I've tested it out. And this particular machine, I tested it out real well and it, it wells pretty decent in the um, let's call it the lower cost. It performs pretty good. It's not an industrial machine, but it's uh, still very, very good. Now, the accessories that I find, the TIG torches and the accessories, are typically not very good with these machines. So what we've done is anytime you see a Mr. TIG sticker on there, it means we've done something special. And now this is, this is nothing new. Uh, a dear friend of mine that has passed away, his name is Carol Shelby had been doing this for years and years and years. And, you know, he'll, he'll take the Mustang, the Mustang car, a very good car. He didn't like it. He didn't like the horsepower, so he changed it. He upped the horsepower. He didn't like the interior. He didn't like the looks of certain trim. Uh, so he modified it. And that's very much what we're doing here. So when you see the sticker on here, we've modified it. Not internally, but we've modified it to make it work perfectly. And I'll give you an example. When we set our gas setting over here, you want to make sure that you have CFH readings and not liters per minute. And so you need to have an argon reading that's fine enough that you can see it. So when you see these packages, just know there's something special, there's something different, there's no extra fluff, there's not going to be anything in your kit that you won't use. So just keep that in mind. This unit right here is a 200 amp unit. It's Mr. TIG approved. So you're going to see it on well.com. And I want to thank you for watching Tig Time. I'm Mr. Tig.